Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today's sketchbook doodles video is finally another kind of um, marker doodling session for you guys. So basically, if you've been following me from like probably, I don't know, like early 2020, 2020, late 2019 kind of ish time, I used to do a lot of videos where I would doodle with the Crayola Super Tips and then I would do line art with some kind of needlepoint pen. So I kind of wanted to revisit that because I know a lot of you guys actually missed when I used my Crayola markers to do some doodling sessions because it's kind of fun to pick out kind of a color combination and apply it to your doodles. And then after that, you can go and refine them a little bit by using a needlepoint pen. So in this case, I am using this, the just the 100 pack Crayola Super Tips. I just bought these like a while ago and they've been holding up pretty much for quite a while. Um, some of them have been running out just a little bit. That's because there's certain colors that I really like to use. But as you can see at the beginning of the video, I showed you guys a little piece of cardstock where I did a few swatches. So I've actually doodled Barbara in the past a few times, I think in a different sketchbook as well as in this sketchbook. But I think it's only the second time that I've done like a little spread, if not, I think I only did like one page of Barbara in the sketchbook a little bit earlier. But I kind of wanted to draw Barbara just because like, I don't know, I just, I really do like drawing her and she's like one of the characters that I remember how to draw quite easily. I might have missed a lot of the finer details like such as to little, like the little band that kind of goes from her upper part of her sleeve across her back. I don't really remember the intricate design. It's not that intricate, but it's like there's a design um on her dress and on that little band that goes across so i don't like i don't really remember and i kind of have a mix of both the in-game character design as well as the official art so the bottom of the dress might not resemble one or the other i'm not too sure which one's which it's just how i have it memorized um so how i usually like to do these um little doodles is that i would basically do my sketch in the pilot color Eno because it just doesn't stand out that much but it's enough to give me an indication of where to uh, put down any of the colors that I want and as you can see right now I'm using this kind of like gray tone and then I suddenly switch to this more um, cooler gray instead of using that really neutral gray I think the neutral gray would have made like everything too bland looking so the cooler gray or in this case it looks like a more just like a pale blue worked a lot better um for these sketches i've used it in the past and i wasn't too sure if it looked well with these colors but i decided to go back and use these because it looks a lot cleaner and a little bit more um cuter with the overall color scheme of barbara because the gray just looks like it sucks out the life out of her color palette because she wears a lot of white and she has a lot of blue and a little bit of like gold trims on certain areas so i usually try my best to work with the larger areas so in this case it's majority white like i said barbara wears majority white and then later on i will move on to the smaller details so um when i was doing this session it was kind of like a little session so that I could take a break from staring at the screen for too long, but I decided to record it because I actually really like the sketches that I did. Um, I usually don't like recording my sketches on camera just because I actually tilt the book up quite a bit and it's just an awkward angle for my camera to face because I'm usually holding the book propped up and even if I have it on the stand, it only works for a little bit. So you'll see the awkwardness a little bit more when I'm doing the inking because of my lamp position. It's putting this weird glare all over the paper. So sometimes when I'm sketching out with the pen or doing like the line art on top, I am, I'm like struggling um, seeing where I should place the lines. So that's kind of um, the downside about doing this at night. But I hope you guys still enjoy watching me do these kinds of marker doodles. I'm not too sure how many I will do in the future. Just because like, I've been really into doodling Genshin characters at the moment. I've been mostly doing them with pencil or doing them with gouache or like a little bit of a wash of watercolor. But the reason why I haven't been doing um, so many with um, markers is because the Crayola Super Tips have very limited colors that are 
primarily all mid-tone or like dark colors. There's like a few colors that are like super light, but they're not, there's not enough contrast overall in the whole um, Crayola Super Tip like little package thing. And it kind of makes sense because they are kind of like, you know, children's markers, kid markers. Like, they won't have that vast of a range. Like, they're probably looking for vibrancy over anything. So, it kind of makes sense. I might look into getting some more, like, water-based markers. I, I like using water-based markers in my sketchbook. I don't have to worry about, like, bleed through. The only thing I have to worry about is kind of the um, pilling of the paper as well as, like, any streaks. But because of how I doodle... I don't color in the skin tone because of the streaks. I just, I think it'll just look a little bit too harsh if I do so. So I decided to always leave the skin basically blank, put an indication of a little bit of shadow. And then usually I color in all of the hair with whatever desired color it is. And then same with the outfit. And hopefully there's a good balance between mid-tones, some blank areas, and like the darker tones. And I usually try to pick colors that are not too dark because my pen won't show up otherwise. Which is why there's a lot of Genshin characters I avoid drawing with this kind of um, method. So I think I would avoid drawing Kaya. First of all, I won't be able to get his skin tone correctly unless I want it super streaky, which I don't. As well as... His outfit has a lot of dark areas and it won't really show up that well unless I leave a lot of white space, which I technically could do. Um, I've drawn like I've drawn Venti before in past sketchbooks, but yeah. Um, Genshin characters have so much detail, sometimes it's hard for me to simplify everything down to just like a few colors. Like even for Barbara here, let's see, how many colors did I use? I used the gray, a light blue, a mid-tone blue, the navy blue, that weird blue teal color like tealish color for her bow so that's five i use yellow for or like the gold so that's six and then like you have the peach color for her skin tone which is seven so that's like already more than i usually use oh and i use purple a little bit later um to do deeper shadows for her hair so that's eight markers for like a few doodles so hmm and you find a better way to simplify this a little bit more. I think, like, even for these doodles, I've kind of mm, went a little bit more detailed than I would usually do. I feel like from past doodles, I would just pick maybe one or two colors and use it for the whole thing. And it was a lot easier to manage. But I feel like that's because I was doing, like, 17 doodles, which I didn't really care about, like, um, matching the colors as much. But for Genshin, I think part of the fun is mixing and matching the colors. But I'll definitely look into doing more like monochromatic sketches with markers again. Like the one that comes to mind is I think I drew Shua and Dogyam before. And there was just like a bright orange and then the black of the ink that I was using. So maybe I'll return back and do that again. So, um... My usual favorite pen to use in these kinds of sketchbooks doesn't really work in the sketchbook because it doesn't dry at all for some reason. So I've been using the Pilot High Tech Point V5 in 0.5 and I just like using needlepoint pens. They often don't skip ink and they kind of have a consistent line. So yeah. Oh, here you can see I was testing out the purple so I could overlay it on her hair color so I could deepen up the little shadows so it'll make a little bit more sense. I do screw up one part of her hair which makes it hard for me to ink because I was following too closely to how I had the shadows in the hair so I screwed up the inking process on the third Barbara, the one that's kind of like with her eyes closed facing to the right, like this one. Um, where did I leave off? But um, in terms of using this pen, I really do like using this pen for doing line art in here. It kind of gives me a similar feel as the Stadler, um, is this pen called? Stadler Liquid Point Seven. Um, but I cleaned my room like three weeks ago and I was sorting out pens and I thought that this pen worked the best. So I kept it in my pencil case and I put the other two pens somewhere else and now I can't find them like at all because I know it came in a pack of three or a pack of two but I had two extra so I know they're somewhere and I need to find them because this one's running out of ink so um I need to find a replacement if not um I find that 
cheap, um, what is it called? Fountain pens? So I have the Pilot Kakuno in two different sizes and I like to usually use them for doodles as well. But the thicker barrel just is, it feels weird in my hand now. I've been using such thin pencils and styluses and stuff for a while now. So my hands, I think my hands is not used to it. So I might need to get back into that before I even start doodling on here again. And I think there was an issue with the ink feathering on this paper. So I'll have to do a few more test runs before I start um, using them for doodles. Otherwise, I probably just have to find the other two pens that are similar to this one. But um, as you can see, like I rely a lot on the line work to help clean up and make these doodles look a lot cuter. I think the sketches looked fine, but because I knew I was going to color them in, I didn't really put that much detail. I was just kind of figuring out where things go. And then usually when I'm inking, I try my best to add more detail, such like hair strands, a little bit of detailing in the hair, line weight, shading, kind of goes all in to when I'm doing the line work. And as you guys know, like I'm not the biggest fan of doing line work, so um, this process is a bit tedious for me. It's kind of fun in the sense because of... I really do like using a pen that has kind of like similar line weight all the way around and you're just kind of finessing all the lines to either look different or look consistent. So usually for me, I would go back into little corners and nooks and stuff and darken it up so you can have different like varied line weight. And I think that's a good way to kind of like spruce up your line work if you think your line work looks too flat and you're not really into like that consistent um, line look that some people can achieve really nicely. Hmm. But, um, oh, I didn't explain this, but I decided to leave this one in real time, but just, you know, cut up into different little segments. So I'm wondering if you guys prefer the slowed version for these little marker doodles because I thought it just made the more sense because when I was doing the lining and the line work it just seemed better to show the slower process for you guys rather than speeding it up like a time speed just to fit it in within a certain time frame so hopefully 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 this is okay <laughs> I had a bit of struggle working on her profile so as you can see I'll start darkening it up and slowly like pushing it inwards so I can re-sculpt her face a little bit so it looks a little bit more refined and a little bit cuter because initially when I did her profile it looked okay in the sketch but when I was doing the line work I kind of made everything a little bit too round and too like puffed out so I needed to push back some of the lines inwards so I darkened up um, certain areas I think for the most part this is probably one of my favorite spreads in the sketchbook I usually feel like it's a hit or miss when I do Genshin spreads like this because i've been struggling to find colors that just worked well together in a cohesive like color scheme that doesn't have like over five colors in this case barbara has a lot but i feel like it worked okay because they're more or less on the lighter side when i was adding colors and it kind of works for barbara because she has a lot of white in her outfit but when i was doing venti's i think in a different sketchbook there were so many greens and browns and i think the yellows and golds and then i think the colors that i used for shading in his shadows they're all pretty close to being like all mid-tones and his hair is quite dark so there was just not enough contrast so when i did the line art it just looked really flat and i didn't really like it so i think dueling barbara is kind of bringing back um my love for doing inking on top of these kinds of sketches. It's just kind of therapeutic and nice to sit down and just kind of go ham with the line art a little bit because I'm just adding details that I think look necessary. So one thing I forgot about Barbara's outfit, I had to really think about this and I had to reopen up my game and turn her model around to make sure I got this correctly because I wasn't sure if I remembered it correctly or if I remembered it incorrectly. So usually when I doodle Barbara, I I forget that her the top part of her sleeve actually wraps around her back and it goes to her other side of her other arm, right? I've always drawn it as like little cuffs at the top of her arm, like at the base of her forearm. Not her forearm, what is this called? Like her bicep, tricep area? 
but because it's up there, I drew it as a single sleeve, so I did have to correct that and pull it back for the second one because I really didn't remember, even though on the fourth one, the one on the very right, I drew it as like one whole strip, like a whole piece going across. Hmm, I'm thinking if I needed to talk about like a Genshin update. I don't really remember what I left you guys off with. I did another summoning session, I think, and I got C4 Diona, I think, for my latest pull on Zhongli's banner, and now I'm at 41 for Pity, and I think I only can have one more roll before his banner actually ends. So we'll see if he comes home before Pity. If not, I am just praying. I, I like, I'm hoping it's Yanfei. It'd be nice to have C2 Yanfei instead of C1. Um, but I did summon on the general banner again, and oh wait, actually previously, I think on the on Zhongli's banner previously, I summoned and I got Bennett, which was really nice. So I have C1 Bennett, and then yeah, recently I summoned on the general banner, and on the general banner I got Ningguang, Sucrose, and Rosaria. So now I do actually have all the four stars, <laughs> um, because I did skip Child's banner. I didn't really want Rosaria that badly, and I rather stayed for Zhongli, but now it's kind of biting me in the butt because I don't think I'm going to get Zhongli anymore. But Rosaria came home, I think I have C4 Ningguang, and I have C6 Sucrose now, so that's kind of nice. C6 Sucrose is kind of nice, so yeah, maybe it's telling me I should really raise up Ningguang and maybe make a Geo Squad. Um, what else happened? I think... Let's see, yesterday I got Sucrose and Bennett to Friendship 10, so I have their name cards, and then this morning I got Chong Yoon's, his card, so they have been booted off my team for now, and then I replaced them with Elbedo, Venti, and Yanfei, so they're accompanying Razor currently, so that is my new overworld team that does all the commissions and all the overworld stuff. But yeah, I think that's about it. I think that's all I wanted to talk about, I think. I don't think there's anything else. I'm just trying my best to rack up primos at this point, but I can't even do the abyss that well, so... I got like zero stars on 11-3, so I'm struggling. <laughs> I think last time I got further along. Like, I beat the abyss last time. Even if I got zero stars on 12-3. That was okay, it counted, so... At least there's that. So I think we're coming to the end of this. I'm just inking the last Barbara. Hope you guys enjoyed watching me do a few doodles in my sketchbook. We're actually making fairly good progress in the sketchbook and I think it's good because it means that I'm hopefully having more motivation to sketch and doodle for myself for a little bit as well as being able to show you guys more sketchbook doodle video like every other Monday or whenever whatever Monday falls on when I do record something, if that makes sense. I'm just adding a little bit of text at the top and then I add two little stripes to help finish it off. I just love adding like little extra stuff, um, like little extra color and everything. But yeah, that is the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed watching me doodle Barbara and hopefully I'll be doing more sketchbook doodles video, whether it's gouache or just normal sketching or more with the Crayola Super Tips. But yeah, thank you very much for watching guys and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!